Good morning, everyone. Simply Forex, trading Forex simply. I am Max Farrow, your host, and this is DexTrader.com, and this is the market read for October 23rd, 2017. All right, let's get right at it. Here on the news section of the of the process here, uh, at 10.30, we had some uh, Aussie news that came off, a little bit of yellow news. Uh, not too bad. Not a lot of heavy movement. We'll see how that market's being affected. Uh, 8.30 tonight, some JP, JPY news, some Yen news, but nothing much past that. Sort of clear sailing today as we start to look at and to try to find our setups. Great work. Okay, so here we are. We're on, we, you know, all of our pages have uh, three indicators on them, our support and resistance indicator from DexIndicators.net. Thank you very much, folks. And, um, uh, you know, one other EMA, which or SMA, which is, you know, divvied up into three major parts. Go through our training to find out what those are. So here's the cool part, right? Uh, in today's market, we were going to look at the uh, Aussie dollar and just a handful of these because I'm going to try to make it very quick here, okay? Um, but if the Aussie dollar, we're looking at a major downswing about to happen, um, I feel, because we didn't get a lot of market move. Uh, here it's 7,800. We're sort of rejecting uh, the price, of course, right? 7,800, 7,800, 7,800. Um, I don't think this is going to be a major push to go too far north. If it does, if it does, look for piercing here at this 7820 area um, to put in for a, a one to one trade uh, up to this particular area, which is, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is the 200 SMA. Okay, I'll give you that one. All right, this is the 200, that's the 20, and that's 100. All right, it doesn't really matter. Learning how to trade this process is very important for all of you. And our system and our program uh, really gives you an opportunity to trade price action with a little bit of knowledge about trend. So that's it in a nutshell. But let me show you something here. The availability to get into this particular trade here is all about timing. When is it going to go? You don't know. But you prepare yourself that once it starts to set up a good attitude towards the process, right, and you're not being faked out, right? You're looking for where's that opportunity about to happen. And now you're looking at previous structure and knowing how to set up previous structure and know where those structures are real and they're and they're where and where they're fake is where that separates the real traders from all those wannabes that are out there. Okay. So what are you going to do with this particular process? Well, you get all these people always tell you, you could do this or do this. If it goes here, it goes there. You go do this, you, whatever, right? They're right. They're, everybody, if, if it's a sell or it's a buy, they're correct. At this particular point, you don't know which one. The only thing you can do is protect yourself on making your decision. And how do you recover? So we know that if it's going to come up past this, it's going to break previous structure because it's, it's starting to set up in this nice little mini uh, downtrend here. Uh, starting to get some reversal pattern in the process. We're at a major support level right now at 7,800. Major, major, major. This is huge, right? That's this area right here. Very, very huge. If we pierce down below, and I don't mean just with uh, some small little rocket that goes down for a second, okay? But if we pierce down and then do another small continuance there, we should be able to use that as support or as resistance from that point on. And we should end up in this area of 77, 90 or 80, right around in that area. So my depiction for this market for today is that we're going to sort of bounce off in this area and sort of push down a few moments to kind of get down in this area. If it breaks the 7820 area, then look for it to be up at the 200 SMA margin. Let's look at the cable. The cable has had um, some good function over the last couple of days, uh, but some, some some surprises. Okay, we had a heavy heavy downtrend most of the week, um, where we we had some good function, we had some callback, and of course some major. I think we had one, two, three. It's about every single day. If you start to see this, there's a major uh, um, intuitive move into the down direction with some 
some pullback, right? So this particular week is not going to be any different, but we're getting some major consolidation, as you can kind of see. One, two, three, four. Even though we did break, and I, I don't think those were stop hunters at this point because it was pretty substantial, I think they were really trying to rally, but they pulled them back again. They pulled them back to this, to this little... 200 SMA, and there's a lot of confusion happening right here at this point. I don't really think we're going to break out of this box uh, today. I think later on, maybe after the market tonight, here on the EST, um, 8, 9, 10, 12 o'clock at night, right around this area, if we do sort of collaborate to that process, I think it's going to be right around in this 1.3160 area uh, to kind of look at for tomorrow but I don't think we're going to break out of that box. Let's look at the, uh, the Euro USD. Uh, the stability is that the uh, downtrend is really starting to, uh, to fulfill. It's got, it's got all of its little markers. Everybody's, everybody's in line. Everybody's doing their thing. They're loving their life. We had a little breakout of previous structure here. I don't think that's going to be too much of anything. I think we're going to recover from that and continue on down South. Um, I think we're going to end up really because we bounced off this um, this heavy support zone at 17.32, and as you can kind of see, for some reason, it's a nice little psychological battle going on for that for that mark. If we do end up coming down again, look at it for coming down with some force. We might get a little bit of bounce off, but then I think it's going to end up after the uh, daytime after the swap uh, someplace south. Uh, if anything, if we don't, it's going to climb back up to this particular area again and try to do some playtime in this area, okay? And this is that 1740 to 1780 area, that 40 pip area. So it really kind of depends. If we break this, this pivot point in the middle of the day, 1750, look for it to stay north. If it stays below that 1750, look for it to stay south. Let's look at the USDJPY. We had some uh, a little bit of pullback after a nice little run. Um, we're, we're breaking the 75 EMA here, and it looks like we're about to start to take a little bit of a nosedive. We haven't broken that uh, 75 in 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 some, in some time. Let's look. Let's look back at the one hour for the last couple of days. And as you can kind of see, we stayed really close. Here's our first penetration about a week ago. And so now we're starting to really take off. We hit our levels up here, uh, which has created a new level for us, but let's, that's on the one hour. That's sitting at that, again, that 1400, that one or that 114 is really substantial. I see us coming back down and maybe retesting this process again with some penetration to kind of stay north of the 114. Um, and again, we got this railroad track right away, which was an indication it was going to run back to, run back to its little mommy here at, at the 20 SMA, um, and be forced. But we're getting this. You see, you see how this is happening right here. We're getting this this little triangle that's happening, this little flag. All right, that's that's happening. Um, in this ascending triangle. Now, when this happens, it's going to build up in consolidation. It's either going to reflect it, and it's going to create itself to go all the way back down to these levels here. Okay, so if it stays north after after the end of the day, if it after the end of the day, if it stays north here without another candle coming back down below it, um, if it does come back down below, look for it to run all the way down to that one thirteen fifteen area. Okay, if not, it's going to stay north and it's going to stay there for a little bit um, and start making some new highs. USDCHF. All still in a nice little uptrend, and of course the USDCAD is kind of blowing things away. When we get this much movement away from the 200, this makes me a little nervous because this impulsive move, it didn't really correct. It just sort of just kept on going. It's like this is where I want to be, and that's okay. All right, we want to be above that 1.2600 area. That's this, this zone right here. Okay, because if we start falling back down in here, look for a nice little bounce back up from that position. If not, we don't really have too much higher than that that we're looking for here. As I pull back, you can kind of see 
we're, we're creating some major highs here. All right. Eventually, we want to if it if it does happen to fall out, it's going to be up. Sorry, I was waiting to be blah blah. It's going to be up in this area of this uh, 2659, 2660 area, where this will be created as a major support and probably bounce out and be down around in this area again for another support area. Okay, so keep that in mind for the week. Uh, you got a couple of uh, good sets of news coming on. Um, we're coming to the end of the month, so stuff's going to be a little bit crazy. Pay attention to your stops. I'm Max Farrell. This is Simply Forex Trading Forex Simply, and uh, this is the market read with Max. Take care. See you next time. And as always, trade.